So let's stand together. I want to pick up with verse 13 and read through 20. Let's stand together as we read Proverbs 24, 13 through 20. My son, eat thou honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease, displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. May God bless his word, and you may be seated. Title the message, Hear It and Heed It, Part 1. You may subtitle this, More Godly Wisdom. Someone has called these statements that follow proverbial wisdom. The hardest train to keep on track is the train of thought, especially when listening to a sermon. Did y'all get that? I don't think so. I think you're, you're still asleep. Uh, but anyway, you know, I, I heard the other week about, this is not just a wise statement, but it probably is true. Uh, are you ready now? Okay. I tell you, so many wires going on, sometimes I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I just hope I don't get lit up <laughs> by certain wires. But anyway, uh, several weeks ago, uh, talking about these words of wisdom, uh, someone said it, today's generation can only listen about 12 minutes before the mind starts wandering. And I said, oh, Lord, have mercy on the pastor. Uh, you can just get started in five or ten minutes, and if you start in the first point, they're already lost. I'm afraid adults are like that, too. There are a number like that. But anyway, here's another one. It'll be interesting to hear teens of today tell their children what they had to do without when they were young. Thought about that? I don't know what a teenager can tell when they get 50, 60 plus years old uh, that they were without anything. Very few. Very few. Here's a pretty good one. The voter has only one consolation. Not every candidate running for office can be elected. And that's pretty good. Hear and heed godly wisdom. First of all, in chapter 24, verses 13 and 14, because it's healthy to the soul. Healthy to the soul. Solomon is speaking here to his son. You see the words here, my son. And I've shared with you before, as you look at Solomon, many women would say, well, he's just as a father to a son. No, it's mother to son or daughter. It's a matter which parent it is, a grandparent. You use the Bible as the Word of God. Wisdom from God. Teach. So he's speaking directly to his son about eating honey. In the ancient world, honey was a, a very important thing. Uh, they saw it as health benefits. It was the sweetest substance known. But he turns the picture of the, of the delight of honey to wisdom of God. In verse 14, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to those who seek after it and attain it. 
It's a picture of just like you take the honey and stir it in things or eat the honey, so it is with eating wisdom of God, the knowledge of God. You take it in. It offers benefit to the soul. And when I speak of soul, I think of the mind, the will and emotions, your total person. Wisdom is sweet to the soul. Like honey to the body, wisdom to the soul. Honey is sweet to the taste, wisdom is sweet to the soul. Honey can help the health of the body, wisdom builds up health of the soul. So like the honey, wisdom brings nourishment and health and joy into a person's life who will strive for it and go after it. Wisdom can reward you. Look at verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, there shall be a what? A reward. It gives you a hope for the future. And you won't be cut off. Solomon, it was like he's talking to the sun. They would go out into the woods to look for the beehives. We need to go out and search for wisdom. John Phillips, a great Bible scholar, said, Like honey, wisdom is gathered slowly, carefully, knowingly, arduously. That's at times of difficulty and sometimes painfully. Many times in a search for honey, they came up empty. The Bible says when we pursue wisdom, it says there's a reward. The finder has hope for the future prosperity. A successful life can't be cut off. When you truly pursue the wisdom of God, you should not be sorry. shouldn't be disappointed. Now, if I search for foolishness and to be a fool, you ought to be shameful. Anyone, you ought to be disappointed. But as we seek the wisdom of God, you have a productive life, a fruitful life. That's the picture. The pursuit of wisdom is like the pursuit of God through His truth, the Word. A genuine believer has an appetite for God's Word, like a baby for milk. Peter wrote about that, 1 Peter 2. God's Word is likened to bread. It gives life-giving nourishment. Man shall not live by bread alone, Jesus told the devil, Matthew 4.4. 4. But by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God... It gives nourishment. It's like the bread. It's like meat. It gives strength and endurance. Hebrews chapter 5, 12 and following. King David knew about God's word being like honey. Psalm 119, 103. How sweet are thy words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. In Psalm 19, where he talks about the word of God. Psalm 19, 7 through 11. Let me share a few of these verses here. This is chapter 19 of Psalm, the book of Psalms. He says in Psalm 19 and 10, More to be desired are they, he's talking about the judgments, the statutes, the word. Than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. He knew what precious, how sweet, like a dessert the word is. Let me ask you do you struggle to read and study the word? Do you digest it? Do you take it in? Think about it as you read it? Pray over it? Have you checked on the use of your time? Someone said, I don't have time to read the Bible. Well, what time do you have? That's your, you've got to look at your time. Think about the time you watch television today. Make a note of that in your mind. 
or listen to the radio or share with people on your cell phone. You got to stay with the word. You can't just, well, I'm going to get wisdom of God today. I read one verse and I got all the wisdom I need. I doubt it. You got to stay with it. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you power to be one who's faithful to the word, learn and live God's word. That's how we live victorious and conquer temptations and trials of life. So I want to take it in, just like Solomon said to his son, as you eat the honey, you digest the sweetness and the wonder of the Word. Let it become a part of your life. In verses 17 and 18, our second point here tonight, hear and heed the wisdom of God, and do not rejoice over the misfortune of enemies. Now look here. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. How do you do with your people in workplace or in your home life or in your community? How do you deal with the misfortunes of others? Do you gloat about it? Jump in joy about it? Have you ever failed? Have you ever sinned? Have I? Yes. We all have. We shouldn't look with self-satisfaction over our enemy's failures. He's trying to teach his son and others. Christians, you are subject of God's grace. We have the undeserved favor of God. Kindness poured out on us from above. Sinners are saved by grace. Now, that's great forgiveness of Jesus, isn't it? We could be in the same place as one of our foes or enemies. We need to take refuge in God's promise that vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Romans 12, 19 and following. God will judge those who do evil against us. It's hard not to rejoice when justice is served. But we can restrain with His Holy Spirit. We need to call upon the Holy Spirit to help us control our natural fleshly tendency to be glad over the failures of others. Fill us with love for our enemies. Back in 2 Samuel chapter 3, King David, Abner switched teams. You remember the story of O Abner. Abner was when the right hand men of David, but he said, No, I'm going to switch. I'm going to go over to the other side. And he died. And you know what David did? He glowed about him. He said, Oh boy, I'm so glad about O Abner. He said he wept, and all the people wept all around him. He became an enemy of David. But he knew the Lord would bring vengeance. The Lord desires we walk humbly. He sees our attitudes and our hearts. Third thing tonight, we need to hear and heed the wisdom of God and not become angry because of the wicked. Look at verse 19. Fret not. Fret is one of the old English words means to get hot, angry, fired up. You know, I got fired up last night. I did. And I almost lost it. I did. I'm sorry to God. I pray it doesn't happen again like that. You see, you've you, you got to be careful. Gotta be careful. Friend, not because of evil men, neither be envious. You see, the workings of the devil are powerful, deceptive. The righteous believe that God.
believe God's power, he's, he's going to have the judgment to come. He's the greatest judge. We, we could have no future hope. Look at verse 20. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. There's no reward in eternity for the wicked. No hope. No future happiness. No future fulfillment to look forward to. An eternity separated from God in hell, friends, is no pretty picture. If you believe Jesus and the Word. Now when you suffer the righteous wrath of God because of evil deeds, that suffering will never end. It says the lamp, that, I mean the candle, you can call it the light or the lamp. It's going to be put out, covered out, snuffed out. That's bad. The wicked die and perish eternally. Some people think about death as annihilation. There's no conscience in eternity. Uh, you better read Jesus in Luke 16 about Lazarus and the rich man. That was not a parable. That's what Jesus told it as a story. It wasn't a parable. It talks about torment forever and ever. Now, as we said, separation from God forever in hell is torment throughout all eternity. Some people don't believe about the judgment of God against darkness and sin and evil. If you want to look in your Bible with me, you can. And Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. He brought David and the people captive from Israel. And in Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar never learned until this time about the true God of heaven. You can read the whole chapter. I'm just going to read a few verses. The Bible says Daniel told him what was going to happen to his dream. And it came to pass. Verse 32, They shall drive thee from men, and their dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, the animals out in the field, shall make thee to eat grass. He had to eat grass like an oxen, cow. Seven times would pass. Until thou know that the Most High, that's God above, God of heaven, ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will, that same hour, that same hour, the thing was fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, driven from men, did eat grass as oxen, his body was wet with the dew of heaven, his hairs were grown, his hair grew like the eagle's feathers, long, and his nails were like bird claws. And at the end of that time, those days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned. His mind, God gave him a mind. I blessed the Most High. I praised and honored Him that liveth forever. You don't believe Nebuchadnezzar learned about the judgment of God? I'd say he did. Mr. Herod, in Acts 12, 20 and following, I want to read 21 through 23. <clears throat> and upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal peril, he sat upon his throne, he made an oration to them, he made a speech to them. People gave a shout saying, it's a voice of a God, not of a man. 
And just like that, immediately, the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. He was eaten of the worms, gave up the ghost. The light went out. The candle, just like Proverbs. The candle of the wicked is going to, what, what's going to happen to it? It's gone. Gone. Out. Well, don't, don't lose it about wickedness. God will take care of wickedness. Always does. If He doesn't do it now, He will do it. Fourthly tonight, hear and heed godly wisdom concerning the lazy. Uh, the word is sluggard, slothful. There are many words. Look in your Bible back to Proverbs 24. I want to read verses 30 through 34. Verse 30, Proverbs 24, 30. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles that covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well, I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and as thy want as an armed man. The person, the eyewitness, the person standing beside the field looked at thorns and nettles. That's briar bushes, thorny bushes, whatever you want to picture it as. They are flourishing. And choking out the crop. Bristles, thistles, briar bushes are not the crop. They shouldn't be there. They cannot bear fruit. Even the wall, it said, is broken down. That protected the fruit. The fruit trees from the human beings who would steal it. Animals that would come and eat. Of the fruits. All it is is a picture of lack of care. Just indifference by the owner. He didn't care about it. How many today don't care. About their life. About God. About their salvation. About eternity. About the future. I was helping in the country church in 1978 and I rode through the area where there was a tobacco field which I knew a lot about. I probably worked that morning in the tobacco field at home. There are weeds and grasses, unplowed rows. The crop was small and stunted. Worthless. I thought of my father, I said, boy, if he saw that field, how sad he would be. I mean, he would have had a fit if that was his field. He'd have been a very sick man, a confused man, not to plow the fields, prepare the crops. Verse 33 says that a little sleep, a little slumber... Seems like they sow the field, but they forget the crop. They start it, but they won't finish it. They folded their hands, the picture says in verse 43. Idle hands is really is a better English word. The man was his own enemy. He committed a crime against himself like a robber scaling the wall. Trespassing the land, stealing the crop. 
We all need to guard against laziness and a desire for rest and recreation that doesn't do what we're supposed to do. Diligence requires more than just starting it. Work until you complete it. If you're working in the field, it must be watered, weeded, cultivated. If there's going to be a harvest, the harvest for the fall must be started back in the spring and the summer. You can't expect a harvest in the fall if nothing's done in the spring or the summer. It must be preparation. How's your work? Dependable? Productive? Sit around or unproductive? Waste your opportunities? Remember the little ant, the lesson of the ant in Proverbs chapter 6? They're diligent. Keep going. They prepare for the winter. And then they come back out. They keep their food. Well, we'll pick up next time in Proverbs chapter 25. Let's bow our heads in humble prayer, would we? Thank you, Father, for godly wisdom. Lord, sometimes we, we get all mixed up. We begin to focus on ourselves and what we think and what we feel. And we forget your word. God, thank you for wise words from heaven. Help us to plant it in our hearts and then share it and live it. Hear the word of wisdom and heed it. Now, Father, tonight I do not know here who needs Jesus, but you know the hearts of many women, boys, girls. Search their heart. Help them to see Jesus. Help them to come to Jesus. They need to come. Salvation by grace through faith in what you've done. Speak to every life here tonight. Needs to come into the church. Those who need prayer. But speak to us as Christians, O oh God, that we might seek your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen.